I learned the hard way when it comes to learning languages and there are things that I know now that I wish I knew years ago. In this video, I'm gonna share them with you to hopefully save you from wasting so much time. I'm going to keep it simple so that these are things that you can easily implement into your learning. These are gonna be super accessible so that anybody can do them. Each one builds on the last, so by the end of this video, you'll feel more confident in what you need to do. Hopefully, you'll then be on the path to getting the language abilities that you're looking for. Before we get started, the thing that is really important to know and something that was reinforced by some recent interviews I did with Dr. Bill Van Patten and Dr. Jeff McQuillan. They've both been studying how we learn languages for decades and have done research on how it is that we really pick up languages. And what they found is that it takes hundreds of hours, if not thousands, to genuinely pick up a language naturally just remembering set phrases and trying to repeat them is a totally different process. You can't learn a language in a week or even a month. It's just simply not possible. So when it comes to our expectations of when we should see results, we need to reframe how we see our activities and also give ourselves a break if we haven't yet got to where we would like to be. Now, we all have busy lives and sometimes it seems that life only gets busier. You've all got responsibilities and I totally get that. You can't cancel your life in order to go off and study a language. But knowing the amount of time that it's going to take you to learn a language, there is one key factor that is essential. So imagine you are learning to ride a bike as an adult. You get the nicest bike you can, a sweet looking helmet, maybe even some of those nice Lycra trousers. Don't let anybody tell you that you don't look fantastic. And despite having all this gear, you only get the bike out once a month when you remember. Chances are you're not going to learn to ride a bike that quickly. It's exactly the same if you want to learn a language. Occasionally, trying to learn a language isn't going to cut it if you want to learn faster. You need to be doing something every day. It doesn't have to be huge, but seriously, the habit of doing just something every day is where you start. I wasn't getting better at Chinese until I did that. So the next point might sound simple, but you have to be creative with it. Has anybody ever recommended a movie to you and said you absolutely have to watch it? You get a cozy night in schedule, you put the movie on and well, it was fine, but it's not your cup of tea. Well, it's the same with language learning too. There's this idea that some people are visual learners, some people are auditory learners. Well, that's been debunked. So sorry, YouTube. But what is true is that we all have different things that we like to do. If you try something and you don't like it, it doesn't mean that you're a bad learner. It just means that you need to keep trying until you find something that you would rather do. That might be watching YouTube videos, reading comics, reading books online. You're not going to build up a daily habit doing things that you don't enjoy. Now we find stuff we like doing because that's how we're going to build the daily habit in order to get to the amount of hours that we need. But this next point is the next piece of the puzzle though. It can all sound a little bit theoretical when we say, oh, just do stuff you enjoy, but you have to be practical if you're gonna make this work. Looking at your daily routine, where is there space in your day to read, watch, or listen? Now, in an ideal world, you aren't doing anything else whilst this is going on, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but it is totally fine to put on some audio material to listen to whilst you're doing the washing up you're gonna be doing the dishes anyway. It's a bit of a no-brainer. You can just have a bit of a think, but why not try this? Write down the hours of the day, and then next to each, write down what your normal activities are. Where it's reasonable, put in the language learning activity that you're going to do alongside or in between those activities you normally do. Don't make it too complicated. Less is more, which I'll explain in a second. But before that, if you find yourself with more free time, maybe you're between jobs, maybe you're young with fewer responsibilities, maybe you've just retired, who knows? You can do as much as you want. Don't feel like you have to go with this less is more thing, which I'll explain in a minute. You can go all in and surround yourself with the language every moment of the day and you'll pick it up much faster. As we say in the UK, fill your boots, mate, go for it. You're not going to regret learning a language, but let's be honest, not everybody has that amount of free time. Anyway, the less is more thing. So when I say that, it sort of doesn't make sense, right? I'm trying to tell you that you need to build up hundreds, if not thousands of hours. Why would I tell you to do less? Well, here it is. You love pizza, of course you do. Everybody does. I love making my own pizzas. But could I eat pizza every meal, every day? Probably not. If you force yourself to do too much learning, you'll stop. Simple as, burnout is a thing which is why I think it's really powerful to start small and build up your habits over time. Before you know it, you're surrounded by the language in a way which would not have been possible at first. By building up slowly, you'd be surprised how much you can achieve. Had I known all of this before, 
it wouldn't have taken me quite so long to get to the point that I am now where I can fit in a good few hours of Spanish a day without having to cancel my life. Despite saying all of this, it's important to understand how the language learning process works though, or let's be honest, you're not gonna get very far. Check out this video here while I explain what to do next.